Hello everyone and welcome to the Winecast. This is part three of my four-part Total Loire Valley series and this time around we'll be taking a look at Terrain. As I said in the last cast, Terrain can be lumped together with Anjou and Saumur and they can all be considered together as the Middle Loire. But this approach, while getting right a shared history and geography, misses subtle changes taking place in the wine culture of the Loire as you move eastward along the river. Terrain is in many ways a transition zone between the Chenin and Cab Franc dominated appellations of Anjou Saumur and the regions of the Upper Loire where Sauve Blanc and Pinot Noir tend to be the coin of the realm. And for this reason alone, it bears separate treatment. Generally speaking, most appellations or sub-regions in the area produce dry whites, reds, and rosés, with a smaller number of appellations producing whites exclusively. A couple of these appellations produce sweet wines, but the dominant style is dry, and even appellations known for producing sweet whites also produce dry versions of their wines. This move from sweet to dry is a hallmark of the differences in wine culture between Terrain and Anjou Saumur, and it's reflected in the rosé production for the region, with pinks and Terrain being pretty uniformly dry, as opposed to their cousins on the western end of the Middle Loire. Even smaller than the number of appellations that produce white wines exclusively is the number that produce reds and rosés exclusively, and sparkling wines are produced here too, with Cremant made under the general Cremant de Loire appellation, that covers the entire Middle Loire, and additional sparklers made as Mousseau and Petilant, the latter being a style only found in the Appalachians of Terrain. Like Anjou and Saumur, the dominant grapes in Terrain are Cab Franc on the red end of things and Chenin Blanc on the white. But, broadly speaking, these two grapes begin to give way to other grapes, particularly, but not exclusively, Sauve Blanc and Pinot Noir, the farther east and, to a lesser extent, the farther south you go. This phenomenon isn't entirely unrelated to the changes in climate that you'll experience as you travel up the Loire River toward Orléans, where you'll find the very last vestiges of maritime influence before the climate becomes entirely continental. You'll find a lot of the same grapes cast in supporting roles here as you will in Anjou and Saumur, but in addition to these, the white grape Remorantan a close relative of Chardonnay that was once widely planted in the Loire, turns up in one appellation, and among reds, Pinot Meunier, Malbec, which is known locally as Co, and Merlot also lend a hand. Pinot Gris, which was important in the lower Loire, but not so much as Anjou Saumur, pops up again in Terrain, as does Sauvignon Gris. The main AOC here is the Touraine AOC that covers the entire region, and it's often the only appellation available in a given part of the region. Touraine AOC whites were driven by Chenin Blanc, but new rules are moving this AOC toward producing whites with Sauvignon Blanc as the main grape, with up to 20% support from Sauvignon Gris. Reds and Rosés are still focused on Cab Franc, but usually blended with either Cabernet Sauvignon or Co, remember that small back or both, along with other supporting reds. Currently, Terrain AOC has six village subzones that can add their name to the name Terrain on labels. They have higher viticultural and production standards than the generic Terrain AOC, and these villages are also a great example of the shift in wine style and culture taking place in the region. The three villages that have had this designation longest, Amboise, Azé le Rideau, and Melan, circled in red on the map, still produce their whites exclusively from Chenin Blanc, while two of the more recent ones, Oisly and Chenonceau, make their whites only from Sauvignon Blanc. One of these subzones, Nobe Jouet, makes a Von Gris, or a very light rosé style produced with virtually no skin contact, in this case using Pinot Meunier, as well as a little Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris. If you're looking for Loire Valley wines, especially outside of France, two that you're very likely to run into at your local wine shop, both hail from Touraine, Chinon and Vouvray. Chinon makes reds based on Cabernet Franc, and even though 10% of the wine in the bottle may also be Cabernet Sauvignon, there are lots of examples of 100% Cab Franc Chinon out there. Whites are made from 100% Chenin Blanc. Chinon produces interesting wines, especially reds, because the local soils can vary from Tufo, a chalk, to soils that feature sand and clay. Wines made from grapes grown on the former, the Tufo, will have more of an acid-dominant profile, while grapes grown on the latter, the sand-clay combo, will give their wines fruitier notes. 
To keep the acid high, the Chenin in the area tends to be planted on Tufeau. Vouvray is all white all the time and is also based on Chenin Blanc. There are dry Vouvrays and they're delicious, but there is a lot of sweet Vouvray out there too. They can be delicious as well, but the biggest challenge to consumers is knowing what you're getting. There are regulated sweetness terms, sec for dry, demi-sec for off-dry, and moelleux and dew for two sweetness levels above that, with dew being the very sweetest. But it's been my experience that these terms don't consistently appear on labels, so it's hit and miss whether or not there'll be a sweetness indicator readily available for you to read. If you see an indicator, it's legally required to be accurate, but if you don't, ask a wine shop employee, or even better still, check online, and don't assume that if it doesn't say anything, it must be dry. Bourgogne and saint Nicolas de Bourgogne, which are just across the Loire from Chinon, are sort of like Chinon's younger, redder siblings. They have the same requirements for reds and rosés, which is all they produce, as Chinon does, and like Chinon as a whole, Bourgogne is working the tannic, savory, acidic thing, while Saint-Nicolas is more about the fruit and soft tannins. Mont-Louis-sur-Loire, which is just across the Loire from Vouvray, has a similar relationship to that appellation as the last two we discussed have to Chinon. The whites are made from Chenin in a variety of sweetness styles, and Mousseau and Petit Law sparklers are also produced. Finally, in Eau Poitou and its satellites, number 19 on the map, that are discontiguous with the main body of terrain, they make whites based on Sauve Blanc and reds based on Cab Franc. Little Jasnier, uh, up north at number 25, makes only dry whites based on Chenin, as does its neighbor Coteau du Vendomois, that also makes reds and rosés based on Pinot Doni. Cheverny, number 32, makes dry whites from Sauvignon Blanc and reds rosés from Pinot Noir, something we'll see more of when we head to the Upper Loire. Its subregion, Cour Cheverny, that surrounds the city of Bois, is notable because it's the last holdout of the once popular grape Romorantin. Valencé, the dark green area on the map is attached to terrain, but spiritually it might be closer to the Appalachians of the Upper Loire with its commitment to Sauve Blanc and Pinot Noir. And the region around the eponymous city of Orléans does whites based on Chard and reds based on Pinot, but its sub-region, Orléans Clary, has its heart in the west and makes its reds from Cab Franc. Thanks for joining me for another wine cast. I hope these casts help to make wine more accessible to everyone, and I especially hope that for the Loire region, since given its size, complexity, and diversity, it can be daunting. But once you know what to expect, navigating it can be pretty straightforward too. If this cast was helpful and interesting to you, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I love hearing from you in the comments, so please hit me up there, or on Instagram at unknownwinecasterdrinkswine. I'm your host, The Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly.